Greetings and welcome to Prayer for America and the Nations. I'm Walter Zikarevich. And I'm Nina Zikarevich. And today we are joined by Reverend Tony Abram, Reverend March Abram. Thank you for joining us. And thank you who have tuned in for joining us on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on YouTube, on Telegram, on Rumble, and of course on our webpage. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for uniting with us in prayer for America, for the nations of the world, and for needs. And we know that many of you have needs, and we will be praying for you. If you want us to include a specific need, you could private message us, or you can uh, just put a note in the comments. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook, we will tr we'll try to check from time to time as the broadcast goes on, and we will include that in our prayers. If we get it between broadcasts, don't worry, we still pray for you. Thank you for joining us. And don't forget to share. <laughs> yes, don't forget to share. Please, please, please share this broadcast. Mm -hmm. It is very important because sometimes uh, social media will put limitations on That's how right. many people will be able to watch one individual's broadcast. But when people share it, then their audience obviously increases and, um, and, and so on. So thank you. Thank you again. The Lord is good. The Lord answers prayer. Amen and we that. take prayer seriously on Amen. this broadcast. Did you have something to say? Well, I just had something on my mind, but maybe Tony and Marge wants to greet the people. Absolutely. <laughs> we want to hear from this wonderful missionary evangelist, Tony and Marge Abram, this wonderful couple that um, have been married almost 60 years. Is oh. that right? Yes, over just 60 over. Years. I thought it was 60 year anniversary this year. No, so it's wow, it's over. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We do thank the Lord, uh, Brother Walter and Sister Nina. It's so good to be with you today and to share with the audience the goodness of God. God is so good, so faithful to us. When we say God is good, Oh, we just thank him for his goodness, his faithfulness to us. And today, as we share what God has given us to share with you, we just trust it will minister to you and it will bless you and encourage you in the in your fight of faith with the with the devil, because he's after every believer. And we hear stories of people having uh oppression the enemy they've never been tried so much as they have the trials they're going through uh even with one of our doctor friends he's he's had the covid he's gone through so much but god has brought him through and he even lost so much weight he was a thin man but he lost more weight and so we we just pray for him and other doctor friends that we know uh we pray for but we pray for you today and we ask God's blessing on you all today. Yes, we'd like to spread the blessing, the knowledge of the Lord. And with the knowledge of the Lord, of course, there's blessings. Because we are entered into a race. And it's a race that we will not lose because we have the greatest coach that man has ever or could ever have. We have the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ with his words uh, that he has spoken in the past, they still are true today because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I know that is the theme of Walter and Nina Zagravich's uh, uh, ending of the program uh, is repeating that Hebrews 13 and 8. And I like also to go with it because the Old Testament kind of ends up with, um, uh, I'm trying to think of Malachi 3 and 6. I am the Lord. I change not. And he's on changing. He's there encouraging. The Holy Spirit who dwells within us as believers is encouraging us to run the race, to keep the faith, and finish the course that's set before us. And uh, Walter and Nina, it's a privilege always to be on the show with you guys. And uh, of course, we've known you for since you were our teenagers. And uh, it's wonderful to see you 
uh, doing so much in the kingdom of God. And it's not you, it is the Lord. And uh, I know that we've been talking even before the broadcast today about uh, Nepal and how God had kept you when you were flying over there and we hear of this terrible crash. And, uh, and I know we've been on some of those flights, Marge and I, in the Far East and uh, in several of the airlines uh, they won't, they're not even permitted to fly in Europe or in Americas because of their lack of security. But that's not the big problem. It's the safety. Uh, they don't want to be safe. But thank God for the 91st Psalm that Amen. we can claim it, that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And to abide under the shadow, you know what that means. You got to be close to the Lord. I know the Lord casts a big shadow, but we need to be in his presence. And we are in his presence because he lives within us. Well, uh, I, I do want to share something a little bit later, so I better save it. And it's just a joy to be with you. And we were talking about also about what uh, your ministry has done for uh, Ukraine. And isn't it terrible the last couple of days what has been happening in Ukraine? And I can hardly believe that it's almost a year since this, this uh, they thought, Russia thought there was gonna be a, maybe a few days, they'd be in and out, take over everything, but it hasn't turned out that way. But we thank God for your ministry and what uh, Global Vision has been doing there. Yeah. I know that many partners like Harley Fiddler and uh, Abundant Life Crusades and, and other ministries and individuals yeah. have stood beside you because you couldn't do it alone. But, God, but we are all in the same team. We are working together. Yeah. So God bless you both. Praise God. Well, it's an honor and a privilege to serve God, and we mean that sincerely. Amen. There's no greater joy than serving God and seeing his hand stretched out, touching people, uh, mm -hmm. saving people, changing people's lives, and, uh, and bringing such a transformation in lives. And if you missed yesterday's broadcast, go back and watch it. I interviewed Bishop uh, Sasha Babichuk or Alexander Babichuk. Sasha is just uh, uh, a short uh, uh, way of saying Alexander. And uh, he is the bishop and pastor in uh, Kherson, Ukraine. Kherson was in the news for a while, um, in particular, uh, about two months ago. Um, it's still in the news, of course because mm -hmm. of the ongoing onslaught that they are receiving the barrage of shelling that continues to come. And we had him on the broadcast yesterday. He said, I think it was yesterday or day before they were hit by phosphorus uh, ordinance. It was phosphorus, uh, um, I guess, bombs or what you would call them. And these are horrible. Uh, but uh, I mean, it just, uh, I believe those are the ones that uh, um, have like a double explosion mm -hmm. and then it just, uh, the, the heat is so hot that it sucks all the air oxygen out of uh, wherever that secondary explosion takes place. And anyone that's near that, it just sucks the air out of their lungs and, and obviously kills them. It's a horrific, horrific weapon. Uh, and they were, uh, they were hit by that yesterday. Um, my understanding is from speaking with one of uh, our friends that um, one of the problems in, uh, uh, in the front lines, in areas in the east where the war is raging, where the Ukrainian soldiers are getting uh, frostbite and, and gangrene in some cases, because when these phosphorus uh, 
bombs are shot at them. They, if there's water nearby, they'll jump into the water for protection. Obviously, you come out of that water it's in freezing cold. temperature. It is not a good thing. Um, and it's not like they've got a building to run into. Mm -hmm. You're talking about being in foxholes. You're talking about being out in tents and, and so on in the front lines. But um, we talked about God's miraculous power. Okay. Um, Pastor Sasha's son was taken captive by the Russians uh, when they were there for four months, I believe he said. He yes, did, yeah. four months. And uh, he was told, you'll never see him alive. Uh, and uh, but he kept on praying. The family kept on praying. We prayed and others prayed. Yeah, let me tell you, um, he said it didn't happen through any contacts or through any connections. Uh, he didn't say that in an interview, but he shared with me earlier. It was by the hand of God. It was God purely answering prayer in ways unexpected. And it was the Russian military that delivered him back, back to, to his house. home. Uh, and he a was, uh, it was a miracle. Uh, mm -hmm. He was not only alive, he was safe. And um, we just praise God. That was a miracle. And the other miracle he shared, of course, was the fact that the Russian uh, military uh, left Kherson. Uh, it was just amazing. After eight months of occupation for them to get up and leave. Obviously, we don't want to get into all the details of how and why, but it's, it's a miracle. And um, so there was great rejoicing, and there is. And he says, after eight months of Russia trying to uh, just push anything, uh, any resemblance, any connection to Ukraine. They're basically trying to change the culture, um, introducing Russian uh, propaganda, Russian TV, eliminating every connection with Ukraine, trying to make it a part of Russia. But as soon as they left and Ukraine, the forces came back in, it was like a resurrection. The people just came alive, not in support of Russia, not sad because Russia left. The opposite, rejoicing that they were free again. Um, unfortunately, as the Russian forces left, uh, we're told that they uh, cut the power lines, they uh, messed up the water uh, so that people would not, so make it uninhabitable. And so, but um, a lot of the electricity has been restored. Obviously, there are outages throughout the country, but uh, they do have electricity and there was no internet. There was no mobile connection. No mobile phone would work as the Russians left. So for a few weeks, they were very, they were rejoicing, but they were in very dire circumstances. No water, no electricity, no mobile communications, but they were rejoicing and God has blessed them and helped them. They've got the restoration of, uh, of electricity and they have water, not drinking water yet. They've got uh, um, the, um, they've got what they call technical water, which is basically uh, uh, un, uh, not properly processed water so that you could use it for washing and, and things like that, but not for drinking. So, and not everywhere, but at least it's being restored and they are, um, but unfortunately, they're being bombed. They're being shelled on a regular basis. And uh, from the other side of the river, where Russians still control, uh, have control. And we asked Bishop Sasha about the churches um, because he's over several a number of churches, and some of them are on the other side of the river and they are in occupied territory. So he said that many of the believers fled, some through Crimea, some to the north, but um, there are believers that remain. However, the church buildings have been occupied by the Russian military. They use them as bases. They use them for whatever their activities are, maybe for staying there, sleeping there, whatever. Um, maybe they figured it's safer for them there because uh, the people uh, from Ukraine will not likely shoot at a church. But um, so there are believers, but they have to meet in houses. That's the only way they can uh, meet. So very interesting interview and prayer. Uh, if you missed that, go back and watch yesterday's um, broadcast with Alexander Bobichuk. 
And that is why we pray and we don't give up. And that brings me to what I think the Lord has laid on my heart. Galatians chapter six, verse nine, it says, let us not grow weary or become discouraged in doing good for at the proper time, we will reap if we do not give in. So we don't want to give up. Our prayers are working. It says in Psalms 27, wait for and confidently expect the Lord be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, Wait for the Lord confidently and expect the Lord to act. So that is why we pray here on Prayer for America and the nations that we believe in prayer. God answers prayer. We may not see it sometimes in our natural um, eyes or in, our, in the physical, but God is working behind the scenes. So whatever you've been asking God to do for you in your life, whatever circumstances you've been praying for, whether it be a relationship to be restored, whether it's a health issue in your life, or a financial issue, or maybe you need a new job. Maybe you've been praying for God for that, but don't give up because the enemy will always come in and to bring doubt into your mind. He always works in our thoughts, in our mind and believe, no, God's not going to come through for you. No, you're not good enough. Or no, you know, you're not going to get better. That's the devil. That's not God because the Bible said he's come to give us life and life more abundantly. So I just want to encourage everybody, do not give up. Your answer is just around the corner. So don't let the enemy stop you from praying. Amen. And it goes to uh, what Brother Tony had uh, uh, quoted earlier, that God does not change. That's there right. is no uh, even a shadow yeah. of turning in God. And that is something that you and I need to be reminded of on a daily basis That's right. that God is an unchanging God and that mm. uh, you may get discouraged. And uh, uh, a friend of ours, Brett Johnson, does a, a little minute, uh, they call it the market minute because he talks to Christian business people. And I was just listening to his, uh, I think it was from yesterday. He says, well, at what point, where do we draw the line when we're praying and praying and, and we don't see results necessarily yet. And so at what point do we draw the line? At what point do we stop? And the answer is never, never, uh, never. We never stop because there isn't a line that God does not, uh, God is answering prayer. And there isn't like a point we say, well, we prayed enough or we pray too much. No, we continue to involve God in our lives and our circumstances. And it is through prayer that we engage God, that we sort of, we could say, give God permission to get involved in our lives. You see, God doesn't just come in and barge in and force us to do things. He's waiting for us to invite him into our lives, first of all, but not just into our lives to be our savior. He wants to be involved. He wants to be the Lord of our lives, not a part-time mm -hmm. consultant. Amen. Back to you, Tony. Yes, uh, I I was going to have more share first because uh, she's what she has. I'm going to continue on. Yes, praise the Lord. Well, what I have to today is to, is along the line of Brother Walter and Sister Nina. What they've said, and it's in in Lamentations three and verse twenty two. It says, "Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for His compassions never fail." They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, this is, I believe, Jeremiah saying, the Lord is my portion. Amen. Therefore, I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him. To the one who seeks him, it is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. The Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. And, and as you said, the answer doesn't come right away. Sometimes we hold on. That's why the word says, keep knocking, keep asking, keep believing, keep thanking God for what he's doing. And, and when we look at this situation of, uh, of Jeremiah, here he saw Jerusalem destroyed by that Babylonian army. And yet he said, I will wait for the Lord. It seemed discouraging. He wept. He cried. That's why it's called Lamentations. He wept and cried yes. over Jerusalem and over Israel, his nation. And yet 
He said, I will wait for the Lord. Isn't that wonderful to know that we can wait on the Lord and we will wait patiently for him. And also the word says, be still and know that I am God. Know that I am God. Be still. Wait for him. Wait patiently for him for the answer. You are praying for something. Perhaps you're praying for uh, for years. So I know someone has been praying for a situation in their family for years, but God is going to answer because Amen. he's faithful. He will hear her. He will hear that quick prayer of that son coming back into the family. And so we believe that as we wait patiently for the Lord, we will see God moving. And even though we're sorrowing and grieving, like the Ukrainian people, the Ukrainian nation, they are weeping, they are crying, they're waiting on the Lord, they're praying. And just like uh, Jerusalem was destroyed, their city, some of them are destroyed, and many of them are, are very much destroyed. And we pray God will just restore to them and pray for their families, their families to be restored. Yes. We know God is hearing and answering our prayers as we wait before the Lord. So hope in God, trust in God. As we said in one of our earlier broadcasts with Walter and Nina, trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but than to trust, trust and, and obey. obey. Amen. And as Jeremiah was praying, uh, it and uh, the prayer for Jerusalem and so forth, and here we can swing way up to the time of Jesus, hundreds of years later, and we see Jesus there looking over the city, and he said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often would I gather the, you together like a mother hen gathers her little chickens, but you would not. And Jesus was praying. And I think if Jesus had prayed, if he felt the need to pray, he was sinless. He wasn't like me. He wasn't born uh, with that sin nature. And I know that sometimes we th look at our babies when they're born and we think they're so precious, and they are precious. And uh, but the, we are, but that baby's born with a, with a sin nature, and uh, that's why we need to teach our children uh, the ways of the Lord and the Word of God. And uh, because them, just right. just think, a baby is born greedy, uh, it demanding. It, 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 uh, and you, as they start to grow, they, they see someone else with their toys, they grab them, they want, they demand attention right now because it's the nature, and only Jesus can change it. That's why Jesus had to say to Nicodemus, You must be born again. Oh, born again, what without the nature of wanting to sin, and only God can change that. And you may that are watching, because we do pray for you. We pray for these broadcasts, not only the ones that we're on with the uh, uh, Walder and Nina, but for all the broadcasts, whether they're in Spanish, whether they're in Russian or Ukrainian uh, or English. We we pray that the people watching would listen because. Christ is wanting to intercede for you, intercede for you. He Amen. is our intercessor, our Amen. advocate, our lawyer in heaven. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's through him that we pray, not through the saints, not through any individual, but we pray through Jesus Christ. He is our high priest. And remember remember John 14 and 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man, no woman, no person, young or old, shall come to the Father but by him. I know there's a lot of people says, oh, just so you're religious, that you're a person of faith. Well, if that faith does not include the person of Jesus Christ, you're running a race in the wrong direction. Not following Jesus is like running backwards against towards 
you're not running towards the uh, winning uh, end of the game of the race. You're running the wrong way, and you'll never win. There's only one way. He is the way, Jesus Christ. And there is only one truth. He is truth. He cannot lie. And and then uh, not only is he the way, the truth, he is the life. He that has the Son of God as life. Amen. And there are people watching. Walter, there are peaching, people watching your broadcast every day that are that do not know Jesus. There's many, but there are many also, I believe, praying the sinner's prayer. We call it the sinner's prayer, but it's a prayer, prayer of repentance, of repentance yes. where we open our lives to the person of Christ, where we can be born again of the Spirit of God. That don't mean that we won't be tempted. Even Jesus was tempted, and he was not born with that sinful nature of Adam. He was born pure. That's why he could be our intercessor, our advocate. That's why he could be the way, the truth, and the life. And our sacrifice, supreme sacrifice. Supreme sacrifice on the cross. He took my place. He took your place. Because if we were to pay for sin, the wages of sin is death. But the gift, listen to this, in Romans 3.23, the gift of God, the gift of God, not a gift from God, but the gift of God, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Yeah. himself yes. He paid. It's Lord. just like, like when uh, uh, Abraham was taking Isaac up for the sacrifice and, 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 and Isaac said, uh, Father, uh, we're taking the wood to burn for the sacrifice. We're going, but where is the sacrifice? And and Isaac said to a or Abraham said to Isaac, the Lord Himself shall provide the sacrifice. In other words, Jesus one day would be the sacrifice, and you and I can thank God that he paid the price that we might have life. And so on this, on these broadcasts, not only is it to pray for the nations, not only is it to pray for uh, United States or Canada, not only is it to pray for Ukraine, but it's to pray that people will come to know the person of Jesus Christ. For he that with its souls is wise. And, and I think uh, of James where it's written, if any man, any woman lacked wisdom, let him yeah. ask of God. And <clears throat> wisdom is pointing people to Jesus. I know a lot of Christians think, well, I prayed the sinner's prayer. I came to Jesus. I was baptized in water. But you know, you were saved for more than one reason. Yes, for your name to be written in the book of life, but also that you may serve the Lord. And how do we best serve him? Oh, we can serve him with our tithes and offerings. We can do many wonderful works. But number one is to spread the gospel, to testify, to share what Christ has done for you. And then one more point of what Marge shared. My mother, uh, who was dying when I was a little boy, and as far as I remember, the doctors could do nothing for her. She, uh, she was the first one in either sides of our family to come to Christ and know Jesus. And it took over 20 years, but she prayed the whole family because she had a promise. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you and your household would be saved. Your family would be saved. And my dad was the last one to come to Christ. Praise the Lord. And that's why we have this broadcast or on this broadcast with Walter and Nina. And that's why we do special 
uh, 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 episodes of of, of the testimonies yes. of what Christ has done, because we love you. That's why Marge and I, though married 60 years last November, it was 60 year anniversary. And even though we're still telling people about the Lord Jesus, we're still involved in the ministry. God's given us good health, and I believe it's for a purpose to serve him. Yes. So amen. we love you, Walter. We love you, Nina. Yes. Amen. We love your whole family. We consider you family and you are family because of the blood of Jesus Christ that has made us all the family of God. So God bless Praise you in this Lord. wonderful ministry. What you're doing here is just a tiny bit of what is happening. I wish the people that are watching could see the tr all the results of your ministry. God bless you both. Tony, I just want to add that, you know, for the stoves that, that uh, brother and Walter and sister, brother Walter and sister Nina have been involved in giving to Ukraine. Uh, some of our family have donated money and they said, and we've told them we're using it for the stoves. And they are so thrilled because they know what it's like in Canada, how it can get so cold and how Ukraine can get cold. And they said they are so happy. And I know you would be blessed and happy to help relieve some of those people's uh, suffering in cold and also needs that they have for food and clothing and blankets. You heard the story of the blankets Brother Walter shared about the this woman having a torn old blanket. And you know, some of us have extra blankets. Oh, we'd love to give them to them so they would have warmth. But you know, as you give, don't be weary in well-doing because you will reap if you faint not, as the scripture was Nina read. Praise the Lord. So give and God will bless you for sharing with us. And, 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 and these little, little stoves that they're going to the poorest of the poor. Yes. Uh, these, these are, People like village people or that, that have little houses, their houses have been blown apart and they might be living in a shack or if they're still living in a house, uh, they, this is something and they can burn wood. They can, they can warm their food. And I, I think of what I heard Nina, I think, say last week that uh, they've been asking for bread because they don't have to. They can eat it right away. They don't have to cook it or 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 put some ingredients together to make bread. It's their mainstay. It's their mainstay yeah. bread, and it, well, it's just wonderful. And we bless you both and pray for yes. you continually and for your ministry. Mm -hmm. And I trust that people that are watching would catch the burden because we're you're doing it not. Not just for yourselves, no. You're doing it for others. Because you have the love of God love of in God. your heart. And, yes. the, the, and the, that's not counting their other ministry outreaches. Yes. In Africa, in Nepal, and so forth. God bless you China. both. Yes. We love you. Yeah, China too. Yes. Thank you so much. We couldn't do it without you both and without your support and without your prayers. And for those of you that are praying for us as well. And for your giving and your praying, um, we really appreciate it. We feel it. We don't, you know, God is faithful. We don't know when the next dollar is going to come for Ukraine. You know, we're thinking, how in the how is God going to provide the, um, for the stoves? You know, so it's interesting how God um, uses one person or one organization, such as Tony and Marge, and when that um, air time go, um, comes up or when that um, those funds dry up from one um, person or or a ministry. God provides another one. And he always surprises us because we says, oh, wow, we weren't expecting this, but God is concerned about you. God is concerned about your needs. And so he always uses people to bless other people. That's right. Amen. And we want to thank you for faithfully supporting God's work through this ministry. And I want to just thank everyone who has given towards Ukraine. You've enabled pastors, local pastors there who didn't run away, who stayed there during this horrific war right. and uh, stayed in these areas where it's very dangerous, but they continue to minister to people. And what is happening is 
as Bishop Sasha said, his church has more than quintupled because a lot of his people left too. He was left with, I think, 100 people or something or less. And yet they had, uh, what, 600, 600 people yeah. in church. Um, so um, uh, that is the type of new hunger converts, that there is. These converts. are new converts. This is reminiscent, uh, except for the war part, of the 1990s when there was uh, the Soviet Union collapse and there was just a harvest field that was ripened. People were hungry uh, for the gospel of Jesus Christ. People uh, were forbidden to serve God. Forbidden uh, Religion was forbidden under the Soviet rule and persecuted very heavily. And so people um, would uh, clandestinely meet together to pray and, and have meetings and homes and so on. And yet right now uh, people are coming to Christ and people mm -hmm. are attending church and, and they're just saying to the pastors how this is making a difference in our lives. It's not just the bread, it's not just the stove, but it's the spiritual impact that is they're having in their lives. And when these, wherever these stores, uh, stoves and, and food is given out, a message, a short message of uh, salvation is preached to those people. People are led in prayer. They are not obligated to uh, listen and they're not obligated to, uh, um, uh, to pray. Uh, they're told clearly, you're going to get your help whether or not you participate, but we want you to know that God loves you, that God cares for you, and that there are people who love and care for you who've never met you, will That's never right. meet you here on earth, but they're praying for you, they're concerned mm -hmm. for you, and these are not necessarily rich people. These are just working people that are concerned about you, and it is they who have given us this ability to bring you this aid. And he says, pastors tell us when they share things like that, people are just uh, um, overwhelmed by the love that's being expressed mm -hmm. by people they've never met who would go through the lengths of sending help to them who they don't, they're not connected with, they don't know and expecting nothing in return. Now, let me tell you, many of these people are receiving Jesus Christ. Many people that would never have set foot in a church are in churches right now. And including what we they, uh, would call the intelligentsia, the your uh, uh, people that were your your professors, your uh, your people, your elites, you might say, they would they're attending churches, so they're realizing that every day is a gift from God. Mm -hmm. And as Bishop uh, Sasha said yesterday, when we get up first thing in the morning, we thank God for giving us life through the night, and that we're alive. And we have another day to serve God. And, and he said, before we were able to plan for far ahead. Now it's just one day at a time. Yeah. And we say, if God permits, we will do this today and we will do that tomorrow. If God gives us life, we will do that because they know that life is precious and it is totally dependent on God and his protection mm -hmm. day to day. Well, you may be uh, wondering, well, how can I help? You can help right now going to our webpage, globalvisionministries.org, not .com, but .org. And right now you can press the donate button there. There are options for you to give right now. You can do it even while we're watching. You can give. You can also send a check to Global Vision Ministries, P.O. Box 5377, El Dorado Hills, California, 95762. And in the United States, your contributions are tax deductible. And so do that. Do that right now. Don't delay uh, that gift. $80 will buy a stove uh, uh, for about $40. About $40, you can help feed a family of about three, four people for one month. Uh, so um, these are these packages of food that are delivered. They keep a family going for about a week with what they contain. Um, and so there's flour, there's some uh, pasta, some grains, there's some there's cooking oil. Some well. sugar, 
And so those packages of um, or bags of food that are given out basically can sustain a family of three or four people for a, a week. And um, so for $40, it would provide four of these packages. So you could help a family for a whole month. Uh, $10 approximately will help a family for a week. And so, um, but medicines, there's some very basic right. medicines. Mm-hmm. Now, unlike here in America, where you have to have a prescription for heart medication, a lot of things over there, it's over the counter. And so there are some very basic heart medications, blood pressure medications that the people in these towns and villages in the war zones, there are no more pharmacies there. And some of them are suffering with high blood pressure. They do not have their medications. There's no way of them. uh, There's no buses there for them to get on a bus and go to some city uh, to be able to buy. We're talking about a war zone. We're talking about Shelly. Tylenol even. Yes, even basic things like Tylenol, ibuprofen. And so uh, for... $15, Uh, $15 uh, we can provide some of these basic medicines to a family. To, to a family. Uh, and so I don't know how long that'll last, I guess up to a month. Depends, so how, much depends, depends how much they need. And, and, you know, it's obviously every medication is different and we're not prescribing things here. The, it's basically they request specific things. And like they, diabetic medication. Uh, well. Yes, yeah, some diabetic medication, heart uh, uh, medication and high blood pressure and um, and uh, uh, pain reducers and, uh, fever, and fever reducers. reducers. Yeah. Uh, and beyond that, it would be like cold uh, meds and things mm-hmm. like that. But, uh, but just some basic medications. What happens if there's not enough? For example, Pastor Sergei from Poltava gets to these villages and he understands this because as a young man, he suffered with high blood pressure, huge, super high blood pressure. So he knows what that is. God healed him when he came to Jesus Christ, but he and he knows what it was like as a young person uh, having high blood pressure and how terrible that is. And so he feels for these people. So sometimes if he doesn't have enough, he'll take a package and he'll just take uh, those, uh, what do you call those little plastic things? And he'll split them between people, you know, as the need is there. Sometimes you'll even have to break one in half you know, so there's, you know, um, not only not the whole package, but just half of that uh, uh, plastic yeah. shell with a bunch of little pills. And so um, it is, it is, uh, we're talking about very basic things here. So what I'm saying, you may think, well, what's $15? Well, you could go to a hamburger joint now and spend that much uh, for a few, for a couple of hamburgers and fries. Right, so. And so um, <laughs> sacrificing one meal will take care of someone's medication uh, for possibly for about a month. It just mm-hmm. depends how much they, uh, they need. And uh, for $10 or uh, for a week or $40 for a month, you can, you can provide, feed a family, feed a family up, to four, right? up, uh, up to four people. And for $80, you can provide one of these stoves and we've had uh, hundreds of these already made and delivered. And uh, we just uh, found out yesterday, one more batch of 20 was uh, um, had, re- uh, had reached an area that we were trying but to hundreds target. Have already hundreds been. have gone out. <laughs> we, uh, said, we put pictures on the website. Right. On Facebook page. Right. They see so they've gone, uh, many have gone into the yeah. Kharkiv region, uh, which is very cold and very difficult. Um, uh, many have gone into the Donbass region, which is the Donetsk region and even parts of Luhansk. And, um, and of course, now some have gone to Zaporizhia and we sent some uh, down to Mikolaev as well as Kherson. Kherson, as soon as uh, the um, uh, it was liberated, we sent a batch of these and uh, mm-hmm. Bishop Sasha told us how they have been a great blessing because some people have nothing to cook with. Um, and even in apartment buildings, he told us there because there was no electricity uh, people had no way of cooking. Uh, unlike other areas, some parts of Ukraine, they cook with gas. But in that area, uh, the apartments were set up with electrical mm-hmm. uh, cooking. Um, you, and so they don't work, obviously, with no electricity. But um, so it, what we have been able to do with your help, um, the help of Tony Marge, the help of their ministry, the help of other ministries, uh, for the fiddlers' ministries, churches, and 
folks here in this country, in Canada, in Taiwan, in the UK, and even from other parts of the world have uh, helped us in this. And we've been able to provide hundreds of stoves and we are ordering more of these stoves to be made, they're being made. And as they get made, we get them out to the, we, we monitor situations where the greatest needs are. And that's what we're trying to get these um, spread out to the most needy. In some cases, like um, uh, Pastor Sergei from Harky was telling us, you know, there's so many people wanting these. So they, um, uh, in one town, they had the government official who had a list of people that were in the worst of situations. And they said, okay, this one really needs one and that one needs it because it's a really desperate situation. Maybe a family with kids and no stove or an elderly person has no heat whatsoever in mm -hmm. a very difficult situation. So some cases we have to just go by order of priority. They're not just giving out to everybody. And, um, and, and so um, I've, I've posted some pictures, posted some videos. Uh, we can't, uh, we get, uh, we get so much, oh, so much. We can't, uh, we don't share everything because it's just overwhelming, but um, we want to thank everyone who has given is giving and will give. And let me tell you, uh, we can't recompense you, but God will recompense you. If Jesus said, if you would do it for one of the least of these, you've done it unto me. Um, so, you know, Jesus um, said very clearly that, um, so, so, you know, uh, he was naked and somebody clothed him. Well, how was he naked? It wasn't him. It was that poor person. It was that needy person. And when we've done it unto them, we've done it unto the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, blankets are needed, sleeping bags, and they're being given out. So we want to thank you very much. And uh, Antonia and March, thank you so much for encouraging you, people Jennifer. to give. And uh, uh, But we want to go back to what you said, Brother Tony. There are people tuning in um, now while we're on live, and we'll tune in later because of different time zones. Some people cannot watch while we're on here live. But there are people who need Christ who do not know Jesus. They may not be experiencing the difficulties of Ukraine, but they're experiencing difficulties emotionally or spiritually. They're realizing that they cannot solve their own problems. They're, they are realizing, uh, maybe they're at the end of their rope, you might say, and they may even be considering hurting themselves, but I wanna ask you, please do not do that. Turn your eyes on Jesus. Jesus truly loves you. He died for you on the cross because he loved you so much. Mm -hmm. And he wants to offer you, he offers you <clears throat> life. He offers you abundant life and he offers you eternal life. He wants to save you. He wants to forgive your sins. He wants to remove that burden, that heavy load that you have been carrying, that you have been trying to carry, and you realize you cannot do it. You don't have the strength. Let me tell you, Jesus is right there where you're at right now. He loves you, and he wants to touch you. He wants to save you. He wants to heal you emotionally physically and spiritually. Brother Tony, you've led thousands upon thousands of people, tens of thousands of people, if not millions, to Jesus Christ. Would you invite people right now and lead them in a prayer? Well, the good news is that God wants to come into you there. Uh, I'm speaking to the people that are watching. Uh, God wants to come into your life. He wants Jesus to be Lord and master. That's the good news. Uh, and you can't have good news unless uh, there's bad news. The bad news is that the devil would like to keep you from coming to Christ. But the good news is Christ is ready to become your personal savior, to forgive your sins, write your name in the book of life, to put you on the path of righteousness. This is the beginning. And if you pray the prayer of repentance and open your heart, then you can begin this path. You can be born again. And the things can just, oh, you can start learning and that have a personal relationship with God. You know, you can have all kinds of friends, but 
There's no greater friend than the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you would, if you are willing, I, the good news is today is your day. And right now, the Bible says is the accepted time. It is the time for you to come to the living Christ. Are you ready? Here's, here's what to do. Close your eyes. Take your hand. Put it upon your heart. I often say that beat of your heart is like God, like the Lord Jesus Christ knocking. And he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone will open, I will come in. He'll come into your life right now. He'll forgive your sins. He'll write your name in the book of life. You can be born again, literally born again, not physically, but spiritually. And be like starting life all over, free from the penalty of sin, because Jesus took your penalty for it. And Marge is going to repeat with me this prayer. You pray with her as you repeat what I lead you in. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I come to you. I come to you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I thank you. I thank you. For the good news. For the good news. That you love me. That you love me. In spite of my sin. In spite of my sin. In spite of my whole life of being a sinner. In spite of my whole life of being a sinner. But today. But today I come to you. I come to you. I confess my sins. I confess my sins. Even the ones I can't remember. Even the ones I can't remember. Wash me in your precious blood. Wash me in your precious blood. Because you shed your blood on Calvary. Because you shed your blood on Calvary. So that my name. So that my name could be written in your book of life. Could be written in your book of life. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. And with your help. And with your help. I'm going to live for you. I'm going to live for you. I'm turning my back. I'm turning my back. Upon sin. Upon sin. Lord, I know I am weak. Lord, I know I am weak. But you are strong. But you are strong. Come into my life. Come into my life. Give me the strength. Give me the strength. To live for you. To live for you. And I promise, Lord. And I promise, Lord. That from this moment. That from this moment. I am going to follow you. I am going to follow you. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to live for you. To live for you. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. I receive Jesus. I receive Jesus. And I confess with my mouth. And I confess with my that mouth. Jesus died for me. That Jesus died for that me. That he rose again. That he rose again. That he is alive. That he is alive. And now. And now he lives in my heart. He lives in my heart. Because I say, because I say, Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord of my spirit. Lord of my spirit. Lord of my mind. Lord of my mind. Lord of my body. Lord of my body. I've been washed. I've been washed in the blood of Jesus. In the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And with your help, Lord. And with your help, Lord, I'm going to live for you. I'm going to live for you. In in Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And now I'm praying for you. Father in heaven for everyone who has prayed the prayer. They've opened their hearts. They've received you. They've called upon you. You said whosoever yes. shall call upon the name of the Lord shall yes. be saved. Yes, now help Lord. them, Lord. Help them. Strengthen Jesus. them, Lord. And Lord, I'm going to tell them to do three things. Yes. And encourage them to do these three things, Lord, and help them to live for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, I'm so glad because I know the angels in heaven are rejoicing because you have come to Christ. Amen. Now, do three things, if you will, to follow Jesus successfully, to overcome besetting sins. 
sins that that are hard to habits that are wrong, hard to break, yes. But if you ask the Lord, and if you do these three things, you will overcome. Number one, talk to God every day. Take time to talk to him like a friend, and we call it prayer. Second, do this. Let God talk to you. Don't let it be a one-way conversation. Let it be a two-way conversation by reading the word of God, by reading the Bible. Start with the gospel of John. And then third, live, confess him, tell others, get, in, get involved in a, in a Christian church that believes the Bible, that's serving the Lord. Tell others because God wants not only to bless you, but for through you to bless others. Brother Walder. Amen and amen. And uh, write us, let us know so that we may also pray for you. Some of you have a need of healing. Some of you are in a very difficult situation right now. I'm going to ask us to march to pray for you. And I know some of you have written in in days past. Some of you are written writing us or contacting us in different ways. Let me assure you that God loves you. God cares for you. And we're going to ask Sister Marsh to pray for you right now. If you're need, in need of healing and it is you and you can somehow put your hand where you're suffering, do that right now. If you uh, have a child that is sick and that child's near you, put your hands on that child. If it's uh, someone else near you that you can lay your hands on right now as we pray, let's agree right now. Now, let's pray. God answers prayer, and we're going to see the hand of God move on your behalf. So, Sister Marge, would you lead Amen. us in prayer? Amen. It is a privilege to pray for the needs of the people. And as I pray, you lay your hand, as Brother Walter said, where you suffer, if you can, or on your heart. And let's believe God right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we come to you in the precious name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you want us to prosper and be in health as our soul prospers. And so, Lord, we pray today for the healing of the people that are listening who have laid their hands on their bodies where they hurt or where they need healing in Jesus name. And Lord, we pray in Jesus name right now, Lord, touch them. Father, in Jesus name, those with cancers and tumors, we rebuke those cancers and tumors. We command them to leave the bodies in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for healing. Father, in Jesus name, those cancers and tumors to disappear. Those with high blood pressure, Lord, their blood pressure will become normal. Those with high heart rates, Lord, and AFib, Lord, we rebuke that and we command them, their blood to become normal, platelets uh, to become normal, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Father, those with back conditions and Lord, that need healing in their back, like our dear brother Harley, Lord, we speak the word of the Lord over him and over everyone as they are laying their hands where they suffer in Jesus name. We just pray right now for that healing to take place from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, those sciatic nerves, lumbago and all those other back conditions in Jesus name. Lord, those that have blood clots, dissolve them in Jesus name. Father, in Jesus name, the organs, Lord, the organs of all our bodies, Lord, Lord, in yes. their bodies, we speak to them in yes. Jesus name, be healed, yes. kidneys, yes. liver, bladder, spleen, Amen. all Amen. of you, all of the inward conditions yes. and organs be healed in yes. Jesus yes. name Amen. from the top of the head to the soles of the feet. Amen. And Father, in Jesus name, those that are discouraged, Lord, encourage them now. We rebuke all the oppression, depression of the enemy, and we command it to go in Jesus name. 
name that the joy of the Lord will be their strength. And Lord, those that may not even be believers, Lord, touch them from the top Amen. of their heads to the soles of their feet. Amen. Let them know there is a God in heaven who yes. hears our prayers and who loves them. Lord, let the Amen. love of God just flow Amen. into the hearts of, of the people, Lord. Let them know that you are on the throne. And as they're praying for needs, they will continue to stand. But Lord, heal right now. We ask in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, we thank you that you are the healer of broken hearts, Lord. Heal and touch their hearts, Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, the throats, Lord, the cancers, all of those in, Lord, in Jesus' name, we rebuke them and we command them to be healed and throat cancer and yes. all of these other conditions of, yes. in the body, Father, Lord, their bowel and all their other uh, uh, organs, Lord, yes. in Lord. Jesus' name, we speak yes. healing from the top of the head to the soles yes. of the feet. And in Jesus' name, yes. we believe your word as we stand yes. together and believe and thank you for yes. your promise. It, it is yes. your word is settled in heaven. So we thank you right now yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. I sense in my spirit that there are people <laughs> that have pain or had pain. Yes. If you check yourself right now in the name of Jesus Christ, yes. that pain go, yes. that pain out of the head, out of the oh, arms, yes. out of the back, yes. out of the legs, out of those hips, out of those knees, out of those feet. Uh, in the name of Jesus, Jesus all name. pain go. In Check Jesus yourself name. right now because there is yes. healing. Yes. As the prayer of faith has been prayed, Jesus as the word has name. gone forth, there has been name. healing on every hand yes. as you believe. It's been provided for. Isaiah Jesus. said, by your stripe, by his stripes, you are healed. And, and Peter looked back and, and said, by his stripes, you were healed. He yes. paid for it. Yes. He himself took our sicknesses and infirmities to the cross. He bore them and be free right now. Yes. All that COVID virus die in, in Jesus. Jesus name. Name. Oh, there's healing taking place. Walter, Nina, there is <laughs> healing taking place Amen. in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you that you are healing. You're healing someone in Africa. <laughs> You're healing someone in Dubai. You are healing someone in Taiwan. Yes. Someone yes. in yes. Nepal. Oh, God, in yes. India. Here in America, in Canada, in Cuba, in Argentina, in Brazil, I thank you that your power flows. They're in Sweden. They're in the UK. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we send your word. You heal them and deliver them out of their destruction. And so even so now, we send your word of healing. Heal in Jesus' name right now and rise up and walk. Lift up that arm, move that leg, test yourself. God is touching you, God is healing you right now. Oh, receive, receive, receive. The power of God is flowing to your body right now, into your veins, into your skeletal structure. Yes, straightening out that back, healing yes, that slip Jesus. disc. Yes, yes. healing that lower Jesus. back, healing that neck, he healing that curvature of the spine in Jesus' name right now. Yes, yes. that short leg be linked in, yes, in Jesus, Jesus' name right yes. now. Oh, yes, that lower back, that pain, that lower yes. back pain. God, in Jesus' name, right now, oh, Father, hallelujah, we thank you, we praise you, oh, thank you for the anointing of your Holy Spirit that is flowing right now to the nations, Father, I thank you that you are touching people right now. And wherever yes, you are Lord at Jesus. right now, this may be something strange to you, but try to do what you could not do with the faith that God has heard your prayer and our prayer right now. And if you can't check yourself right now, do that later. You will see God working in your life. Put your faith in action. Release your faith. Amen. 
wherever you're at. And I believe and I sense that God is healing people in the nations and various parts of the world. Just yes, believe Lord, right now. Trust God right now. Put your faith into action. Hallelujah. Jesus, and just as God can heal your body, God can heal any nation. So let's pray for the United States of America. Pray for Canada, for Ukraine, for Russia, wherever you're at. Pray for your country. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, for establishing this country on Christian principles to be a shining city on a hill to all the nations. Father, we ask and pray that you restore our light to shine bright again to further the gospel in our country and around the world. Father, have mercy on us. We are humbling ourselves before you and asking you, Lord, to forgive us for allowing wickedness to take hold in this country. Father, we ask that your heart be moved now to act on our behalf. Father, you said the gates of hell will not prevail against your church. And so we acknowledge you that you alone can save us. Thank you, Lord, that you gave us the authority um, by in Jesus' mighty name to trample on all the power of the enemy. Father, we are thanking you for intervening with your mighty power to save this country. Thank you, Lord, that you are awaking your church to stand in the gap against the evil agenda of the enemy. Father, we pray that your light will shine on everything that is hidden in darkness and expose evil at every level. Father, we bind all the evil forces and cast them down that are standing against your plans and purposes for this nation. We declare and decree right now that the enemy's hold on this country is broken off and the stronghold of deception is cast down in Jesus' mighty name. And we decree truth and justice to fall upon our country. Father, let your kingdom come and your will be done in the lives of every mayor, senator, governor, congressman, congresswoman, representative, and to everyone holding a governmental position. Father, lift the veil of lies and deception over them and over this country. And may your Holy Spirit hover over them, enlightening them with your truth and saving them from destruction. May they rule in righteousness and acknowledge you as Lord and Savior. So Father, we thank you for your unfailing love and faithfulness to us. Revive this country again to honor you and your word. And Father, we believe that in your mighty power that America shall be saved. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. And Father, we pray that you would uh, raise up righteous rulers yes. uh, in the nations of the world, including yes, this Jesus. nation. And Lord God, we speak an end to the war in Ukraine. Yes, so we thank you for and that. And we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for an end to that war. We say no to the war. And mm -hmm. whoever is wanting to continue this war, we pray that the uh, Holy Spirit, you would give them a heart heart of repentance, that you would break the stony, fallow ground in their hearts, and that they would repent and stop in their tracks. In the name of Jesus yes, Christ, we speak peace over Thank Ukraine you, and the yes, region. You, we Jesus. speak salvation, healing, you, awakening, spiritual awakening, and revival. We speak salvation and prosperity over the nation of Ukraine in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord, Jesus. put a heart of repentance in the hearts of those, um, the lives of those soldiers who are uh, from the Russian side that are trying to destroy, um, that are uh, fighting under command to, to fire on buildings, to fire on civilians. Lord, we pray that you would stop them. We pray that they would say, no, we will not do that. And if they continue, we pray that you would ruin their equipment. They would cause their equipment to malfunction and their, uh, their equipment not to be able to fly, their ordinance not to be able to fly. Yes, Lord, and if it does go, that it would fall in some empty field where no one is at in Jesus' Thank name. You, and Lord Jesus. God, we as a bind the principalities, the rulers of darkness of this age, over this nation, over Canada, over Mexico, yes. over the Caribbean, Central yes. and South American Jesus. nations, over the African continent, over the Middle East, yes. over Jesus. Asia, Jesus. over Jesus. Europe, over the United Jesus. Kingdom, over Australia, the South Pacific and Indonesia and all those Jesus. nations in that region. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we bind the rulers of darkness over those in every nation of the world. And Lord, we say, come, Lord Jesus, uh, your will be done. Your kingdom yes, come, O oh God, in our lives, first of all, yes, in the Jesus. lives of every believer, but also in our nations, in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, Amen. praise Amen. God. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Tony and Marge, for joining us today. And folks, please share this broadcast with your friends, your loved ones. And if you're watching us on YouTube, please sign up to our YouTube channel. It is free of charge and allow notifications so that you are notified every time we are on. And um, uh, if you're watching us on Facebook, share this on Facebook. If you're watching us on other social media, share that with your friends, your loved ones. It's a way of witnessing. It's a way of helping them because many people are in need of prayer. Many people are in need of encouragement. That's right. And that's what we are doing here on this broadcast, praying for needs, encouraging people, and always pointing people to Jesus because he is the unchanging God and he is the same yesterday, yesterday today, 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 forever. Bless you. Bless you.